and this is really uh, more than a full-time job for me so yeah. uh, but but I love it it's still helping people I became a pharmacist to help people um, the Senate in the Senate uh, role I could help people and and this is just helping helping people on a larger scale Hey everyone, welcome back into another special edition here at At The Core. I'm your host, Danielle J. Martin, and this series is sponsored by TK Business Magazine. I'm super excited to continue continue the conversations with local leaders across Kansas where we get to have the opportunity to sit down with someone pretty interesting that you are familiar with, and I'm super excited to bring our Kansas Insurance Commissioner, Vicki Schmidt, here to our show today. Vicki, how are you? I am great. Thank you so much much for inviting me here. This is very exciting. Can I just say I'm a really um, just blushing right now in this space because um, I've spoken with you before and to have this opportunity to sit down and have, I call it girl time. We're going to spend this time and have a little girl time because you are community facing. People are, are familiar with seeing you across the state, um, speaking with you about different topics and things. But today I want to get to know Vicki and who you are. So um, if you can just start with what's something that people may not know about you? You. Oh, I think I'm a pretty open book. <laughs> I think I overshare and people know about everything about me. Yeah. Um, uh, maybe the fact that uh, can't leave the uh, bedroom without the bed being made in the morning. That's a good one. <laughs> I'm like that too. I can't because then your day is off, right? Right, right. Yeah, exactly. that's exactly right. <laughs> not It's not ready to go. Yes. And so um, I appreciate that uh, feedback because I used to think that I was like a clean freak, but it's like, no, it's it's really a part of being really successful in your day to make sure you start with the bed all put together. So I appreciate that. Okay. Share something in your childhood um, that's a favorite memory. You know, I would think my fa my most favorite memory is um, I started dating my husband when I was 15 years old and uh, never dated anybody after that. And, uh, it, you know, we, we went to college together. We, we got married when I was 18. He was 19. We have our 50th anniversary coming up in just a few weeks here. Yes. And that seems to make me feel like I should be so old. Um, I remember when my parents celebrated their 50th, but you know, we were pretty young at the time and we, I was so fortunate that we grew up together and, yeah. uh, you know, we've, we've made a great life for ourselves and one that I am so blessed to have. And, yeah. uh, so, you know, when I was in fifth grade, I actually rode my bicycle through his baseball game. I lived in a cul-de-sac and I was all boys around my neighborhood, except for my sister and I. And so we just used to torment them and ride our bicycles through there. So wow, um, that's beautiful. That's a childhood memory from a long time ago. Yeah, And being married to the guy that you were in high school with. Wow, honey. So <laughs> you have a lot of relationship and marriage advice that you can give us. So first question, I'm sure many people are wondering, how did you stay together that long? Oh, how it do take, you do it? It takes two. <laughs> <laughs> and I think both of us have to give 110% at times. No, oh, I, I, I am I am uh, very serious when I say this. I, I am so fortunate because I know a lot of people wouldn't put up with me. Um, he is, uh, he's pretty much a saint. And, uh, uh, you know, but we have grown together. We had similar backgrounds and um, he he lived a block and a half away from me. And so, um, you know, it was just, it was just the way it happened. And and I do feel very blessed and, and uh, I'm really glad that I chose the person I did to marry. I do it all over again, time and time again. I love that. Thank you for sharing that. And I'm sure he appreciates that uh, comment as well. <laughs> and so Vicki, many people know you're a lifelong Kansan, you're, mm -hmm. you're a pharmacist and a dedicated public servant. And so talk to us about being the leading face of the state. You are the Kansas Insurance Commissioner. Did you ever see yourself in this in this role? Never, never. That was never a dream of mine. I, I uh, took kind of a uh, change, I guess, uh, uh, in my career path. I was um, I have been a pharmacist for a lot of years and went to the University of Kansas and graduated from there and, and have worked many, many years in the pharmacy world in, in different capacities. Um, when I was in the mid-1990s, Governor Graves appointed me to the Board of Pharmacy, mm -hmm. and he um, 
it, w- it was a great opportunity for me. And I am very thankful to him for doing that. What happened uh, in that time was that we had to go before the legislature to testify on certain bills. And mm-hmm. since I was the one in, in Topeka, um, I got the short straw to go before the legislature. So I went to the legislature and uh, uh, presented a um a bill that we were working on and, and we needed to have happen. And I was pretty nervous about that. I was um, not, had had never done that, never presented before the legislature. Wow. And it was after lunch. That's a bad sign. Uh, it was after lunch. And so I'm about halfway through and I look up and two of the legislators are sleeping. They have nodded off. Oh, wow. And I uh, I was so mad about that. Yeah. I thought I have I have spent all this time. This is really important to us, and right. you know, if if you can't even stay awake to listen to what I have to say, so um, in my typical fashion, I'm pretty sure I, I went home and um, spaghetti is my comfort food. Mm-hmm. And uh, mm-hmm. my husband knows if he hits the back door and uh, the spaghetti is cooking, that it, there's probably it's something that's gone day. really wrong. Oh, and he said, "What happened? What, how'd it go?" And I said, "Well." I I said they fell asleep and, you know, that's just ridiculous. And if if I ever have the opportunity to run for office, I'm going to do that. And he said, like most spouses probably, okay, fine. Yeah, what's for dinner? And, you know, and we we proceeded on. Well, then there was an opening in the Senate and uh, it was an open position. Uh, The person wasn't running again. And so um, our youngest son was a senior in high school that summer or just graduated and was going to go to college. And I told my husband, this is, this is a time. I mean, he's a, um, you know, we're going to be empty nesters. I mean, what else are we going to do? And he looked at me and said, well, you know, I know a lot of empty nesters and they don't lose their mind and run for public office. (laughs) So, um, it was a little bit of a pillow talk there. And, um, um, but then, you know, after that, then the rest was history and, and, uh, went on to serve in the Kansas center, um, 14 years. And, um, um, and certainly enjoyed my time there. But uh, then there was another open seat in, in the Kansas Insurance Department. And that took a lot more talk. Yeah. Uh, but, um, you know, so I, I you know, I, until until becoming commissioner of insurance, I still worked uh, as a pharmacist and, and uh, I still maintain my license. And I Kansas law, I can't regulate somebody. I can't work for somebody that I regulate. So the PBMs, uh, pharmacy benefit managers, um, limit where where I could work. Mm-hmm. And um, and this is really a, more than a full time job for me. So, yeah. uh, but but I love it. It's still helping people. I became a pharmacist to help people. Yeah. Um, the Senate in the Senate uh, role, I could help people, and yeah. and this is just helping helping people on a larger scale. Yeah, I appreciate you sharing that feedback and that background because many people um, don't get to hear, you know that that background in that space of how you got to this journey. Some people think it's easy to just walk on, um, walk into this role and be like, yep, I'm a senator now. Now I'm the Kansas insurance commissioner. And like, it's all like a piece of cake. And so um, I always like to share the background kind of like the behind the scenes of what does it take to get to that space? Because especially as a woman, you are constantly faced with challenges. And so The question that I have for you is what keeps you going? What keeps you motivated? And how do you show up every day confidently? (laughs) The confidently may be the key (laughs) word there. Um, I show up every day. Uh, You know, I think running for public office is tough. I mean, you're you're really putting yourself out there. I would say that in the beginning, I had no idea how tough that was. Uh, I started knocking on doors and and started talking to people and and uh i love talking to people i i i love uh hearing their stories and um that that's how it started and and you know then there are the um then there are the cases of the people that um um well people don't not everybody always agrees with you and uh i I think that you know when i first started running it was a different time to run for political office and Mm -hmm. and uh uh, you know we can have disagreements and still agree on 90 90 95 percent of the things Mm -hmm. um i i think 
a real eye opener for me was when I was serving in the Kansas Senate and I got a phone call one time um, many years ago because it was on a corded phone. I remember it. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the uh, the gentleman, uh, I said, this is Vicki. And he said, um, I didn't vote for you, but I need your help. And that's how the conversation <laughs> okay. started. And I thought, wow, not how right. I would have started a conversation, but you know, yeah. okay. And, um, and, you know, he said, um, and I told him, you know, you're you're in luck because right. I don't represent just the people that voted for me. I represent this entire district, right. and so what can I do to help? Yeah. And it was a um, it was a, a a situation that needed um, some immediate action, and we I was able to do that. And uh, it it I'm very proud to say it had a it had a really nice outcome for he and his family and that that meant a lot to me um and by the time it was over um he asked me if I, he could put a yard sign up for me and <laughs> oh uh i and he he continued mm -hmm. and i you know he still has the yard signs yeah, uh, that's and so good. you know it, it i think you know th those are the things that keep you going i mean and we have so many successes in in our uh, in our department of yeah. helping people that have insurance issues and mm -hmm. um i think we're the best kept secret i don't want to be the best kept secret mm -hmm. so yeah and i'm glad that you said that because like when people do hear insurance they kind of get like it's like the sneeze the bore they're like yeah i don't need that but it's like the number one key component that we need in all the things in retirement in life and all the areas um in our lives we do need insurance and it's something that we can't overlook and so your years of serving as a dedicated um public servant i would say putting together a senator and commissioners over about 40 years and so you've been public facing um what's a challenging let's say scenario that you've been faced with um in your time in this position well, I think, you know, it starts with communication. And um, if we don't have good communication, then we don't have good conversations. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, we have to we have to get to know what the issues are. And for me, it's listening to my companies uh, that that um, that we interface with, listening to our consumers that we interface with, listening to my employees, uh, listening to a, a whole wide variety of, of people. What I have found is that sometimes we don't talk the same language. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the same subject, but we're not talking about the same language. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, in January, um, we actually brought together people from the insurance industry. We brought to pe people from the uh, healthcare provider um, industry, and we brought legislators together to talk about some accreditation issues and to talk about some things that we um, that well, put people on the same page. Industry insights is what we called it. And, uh, you know, we took a really difficult conversation and uh, got people in the same room. It's amazing when people just talk to each other <laughs> instead of over each other or around each other, yeah. uh, what what can happen. So, you know, I, I think those are the, that that's a way that we've tried to solve some of the problems and the issues that we see yes. in the in the space. I love that. And can you even touch on um, what are some of the pre pressing issues that we should be aware of, especially in our community or even just statewide? What are some things that you think that many people, Kansans, are unaware of when it comes to insurance? Well, I think the number one thing is, uh, and I, I preach this over and over and over again, is you need to have active conversations with your insurance agent at least once a year. Because what we found out in Westmoreland and in Andover when the tornadoes hit is that we have uh, a segment of population that were underinsured uh, that weren't, they had, uh, they might have replacement coverage, but they're, they didn't have it insured for the right amount. Mm -hmm. So if you make an addition onto your home or you change some things um, in your home, you you need to check in and make sure that you have the coverage you think you have. And 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 on that, not everything is always covered. Some things require a rider and, a, and a, an additional policy. Uh, so you need to really make sure you know what you have um, in that in that coverage space. And you know, I think it, it's heartbreaking to go out and to uh, find that people don't have the uh, amount of insurance that they thought they had. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I and I also know that the other part pressing issue is the affordability of insurance. Yes. And I don't take that lightly either. But one of my main goals is to make sure that companies have reserves right. to pay for claims when a disaster happens. Yeah. And, you know, we have to make sure that um, those numbers are, are sound uh, and, and verified by an actuary and, and make sure that that happens. You know, we, it, we live in a 
uh, a time when inflation is is a real thing for yes. all, for all of us, uh, mm-hmm. whether you go to the grocery store or or uh, uh, you buy insurance, yeah. and so that that is a uh, that is an issue. I don't set the rates, mm-hmm. um, but I do approve the rates, and and like I say, they have to they have to meet state law, and yeah. and they have to uh, meet all of those those things. But um, you know, insurance availability and affordability is is really important to me. You bring up that keyword affordability, and Vicky, I'll be honest and let you know that um, I wasn't, you know, really aware or really trying to get information or or understanding about, um, let's say, healthcare costs and insurance or any of that matter. Because you know, when you're young, you're living your best life. You're like, I don't care about this stuff. But as I'm in this space of retirement planning and talking about it all the time, um, I'm very aware of the rising costs of healthcare costs and the rising, um, like you mentioned, affordability and how are people going to be paying for this, especially with inflation. Can you talk about what you and your team are planning for or the vision for healthcare and insurance in the future? Well, I think we're always looking to make sure that that uh, we're in the right space with that and that that we um, look at the rates that are being charged and and make sure that uh, the rates that are being charged are appropriate. Um, You know, I think in the healthcare space, it's really tough to keep up with the technology, mm-hmm. and you know we all want to have the best treatment and and the, and the best for our loved ones, for ourselves. Yeah. Um, and and some of those new uh, treatments are expensive. Some of those drug therapies are ex- some of those prescription medications are are expensive. Yeah. But I don't think you can ever uh, quit looking at at the affordability yeah. and what you can do to make that better. Yeah, and I know you and your team are working very hard on ensuring that Kansans are covered in that area because it's difficult. And like I said, um, it wasn't something that was brought to my awareness until I started talking about it. And you you brought up the idea of people communicating but not speaking the same language. But then when you actually sit down and talk to someone about it, you're like, oh, I do need to know about this. And so um, I appreciate you taking time to making it clear and um, just aware that it's a concern that you guys are facing and that you guys are working on. So we know that we can trust you in that area. But bringing back... Um, who you are as a person beyond the title, because I just wanted to spend a little bit more time on that just because now it's fascinating. I'm like, oh, I know what you're talking about. So I can like have this conversation with you. But I do want to spend this time getting to know Vicki and um, let's go into this personal space of you being a breast cancer survivor and um, take me back to the time where you f- you found out that information. I'm sure it was very difficult. Um, what did you do in that moment? Well, that's that's an interesting story, you know. With uh, uh, apps like My Chart, mm-hmm. uh, you get notified almost before your doctor calls you. You get notified, and for me, that happened the Friday before Memorial Day uh, in 2023, mm-hmm. and I had uh, um, been called back for um, an additional study, and then I had a biopsy after that. And yeah. um, the timing was, you know, they said it would take five to seven days, and so when I got a result the next day, I figured, oh, it. I knew that if it was positive, there would have to be other, um, I thought there would have to be other testing done on it. So um, it's Friday, four o'clock in the afternoon and uh, three day weekend coming up and I click on my chart and you have cancer. Uh, And, uh, you know, the world pretty much stops Mm -hmm. at that at that moment Mm -hmm. in time. Uh, I'll I'll probably never forget where I was sitting at my desk and uh, never forget that I couldn't hardly breathe for a moment. Mm -hmm. Um, But, you know, um, I did drive myself home. I sometimes wonder how, but I did drive myself home and, uh, uh, you know, got back into that cocoon of uh, somebody that loves me, right? And and, uh, somebody that's going to help take care of me. And, uh, you know, it it didn't take long to um, learn, uh, you know, I tried not to Try not to surf the net too much uh, mm-hmm. because that's not really good. Right. Uh, but you know, I, I um, you know, laid out a treatment. Plan. I mean, you lay you lay out a plan of action, right. and the plan was: I need to get to a doctor. I need to know what I've got exactly, mm-hmm. and then you know, I need to look at the recommendations they give you, and and we need to go from there. Yeah. So you know, you have that pity party, um, and that um, you know can last um, yeah. a while, but uh, you have the pity party, and then you just. Uh, go up uh, for me it was yeah. just let's execute the plan yeah. and uh, so I had surgery and I had radiation and I figured I finished up my radiation in September okay. um, 
I am here to tell anyone who will listen to me, mm -hmm. get your mammogram because yes. this was a screening mammogram done on a yearly basis. And uh, it was a, a very small uh, lesion and, you know, it was, it was treated and, and uh, I got, I had some scans a couple weeks ago and I've got a clean bill of health and wow. I'm so blessed and thankful, thankful to the people that cared for me. Really thankful to my husband that uh, drove me back and forth to appointments and, <laughs> gosh, was kind of my compliance officer, maybe, mm -hmm. um, you know, wouldn't let me do all the things I wanted to do when I wanted to do them. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I really, um, uh, I, I really want to stress that preventative medicine is so much better than if you have to have something done on an emergency basis. Yeah. And uh, so get your mammogram. And, and uh, I, I know they're not the most pleasant thing to experience, mm -hmm. but uh, they can save your life because I'm pretty sure it saved mine. Wow. Thank you for sharing that because I was going to ask you, you know, being a pharmacist, being someone that is healthy, like, did that surprise you? You talked about getting mammograms yearly. And so when you see this on your my chart, you're like, what the heck? I had no family history. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, it it is a, uh, a it's a little bit of a shock. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the statistics continue to rise and, and uh, you know, and, and sometimes we don't take such good care of ourselves. And yeah. I, I know, especially um, during the pandemic, you know, um, mm -hmm. a lot of things weren't the same. And right. uh, I, I really think that um, um, people need to get back on track and get those okay. preventative things done. And, you know, everybody will thank you for it. Yeah, I appreciate you sharing that and sharing um, wisdom and encouragement on why we need to get them yearly, monthly, whenever you schedule them, just make sure you're getting them done. Because I know it's something we try to avoid. But in there, when you were sharing your story, you made it sound like you couldn't sit down. So do you have <laughs> do you have a problem with yes. staying still? I can relate to you. So I'm just wondering, oh. like, where does that come from? I don't know. But I know the day after surgery, I walked <laughs> out of the bedroom and I told my husband, hey, I feel so good. I mean, I'm going to get dressed and you're going to drive me to work because I knew I couldn't drive. And right. I said, you're going to drive me to work. And he looked at me and he said, turn around mm -hmm. and go back in the bedroom. And these are the medication talking. This is a medication talking right yeah. now. And you need to, um, you, tomorrow you're not going to feel so hot. And uh, <laughs> he was right. And don't ever tell him that. Yeah. Uh, but he was right. And, and uh, you know, I think he, um, uh, you know, he hid the power cord to my my uh, laptop, my uh, work laptop mm -hmm. from me. And, um, you know, it's really hard for me to step away for a yes. while because, you know, I don't think the office can work without me. Right. Oh my gosh, and uh, yeah. that is not true. Yeah. Um, I, I have a terrific team there and I am so lucky that, yeah. that, uh, uh, they, you know, I mean, I, we didn't miss a beat at the mm -hmm. office and, and, uh, I'm forever grateful to them for that. But, um, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, I really, I can't really sit down and yeah. I, I wish I could tell you that I like to knit or crochet mm -hmm. or you know do something with my hands I just don't yeah I, I mean You're I don't even know if I can it. do it I, yeah. I just can't so um you know mm -hmm. I I guess you know I, I do like to go for walks and um yep. you know I'm not a runner you can tell that but mm -hmm. um just take a look but you know I, I'm a walker <laughs> um yes. I like to walk and I like to get on my elliptical and pound things out on it and and uh, do things like that yeah. but um, do you like you know, thrive off of doing? I do. Yes. I do. I, I you just, don't have to apologize for that. I'm the I, same way. You know, kind of, but you know, sometimes I wish that um I could just dial it back a little yeah, bit at times. I but um mm -hmm. and, and I think I I think, you know, on when when you do get away from a work environment, it probably takes me a couple of days to um yeah to kind of calm myself down and mm -hmm. know that everything's okay. But then I'll occasionally sneak a phone and, you know, call back to work and see how <laughs> things are going. Uh, and I know they will call me if they need me, but, um, yeah. you know, they don't. Really. <laughs> Well, I love that. I love that you don't have to apologize for it. But I do understand like, you know, your self-care is important. So you have to, you know, take a few days, a few days, and then we can get back to work. But I'm curious, um, you know, being a leader in your family, in the community, um, tell me about Let's call it a powerhouse moment. I don't know if you're familiar with, but nowadays people are keep saying this um, term powerhouse, which essentially means that you are doing something monumental um, in your community, in your business. And for you, what would you say is like your powerhouse moment that you've done in your years of serving as our commissioner? 
Well, I think it it's kind of, for me, it, it would depend on which phase of my life I was in. Mm -hmm. When I was a senator, I was really uh, proud to have it sponsor some pieces of legislation um, one was the Clean and Door Air Act, and and uh, you know I think it's been it's so old now that people can't remember um, individuals uh, smoking in a in a restaurant or in a um, in the grocery store or places like that, and mm -hmm. that was a really big deal for Kansas to pass. Um, we did the uh, autism coverage for children. Yeah. Um, I'm passionate about that. Early, again, early treatment, mm -hmm. uh, and the, you change the life of those children f forever. And, uh, and their families and their parents. And uh, so the autism uh, coverage was really important. And then, you know, something that has affected me in the last year that that I never never thought I would be the uh, would consume those services was uh, I uh, helped provide the seed money for the KU Cancer Center yes. when they were looking at trying to get their NCI designation yeah. and that was a budgetary uh, amount and that was a pretty big deal for Kansas to do and now they're a comprehensive cancer center in addition to being an NCI uh, cancer center. Wow. Um, on the insurance side of things, you know, we've cut fees by over $50 million to people doing business in the insurance and the securities uh, space. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of money to uh, for for our state to uh, have uh, given back to the to those agents. Uh, we've recovered over $16 million just last year in our consumer assistance division and $36 million since I uh, took office. And that money went back into Kansas consumers pockets and and uh, um, and also, you know, changed outcomes for health um, health reasons and and um, you know if you're in a car crash uh, mm -hmm. getting your car taken care of or yeah. or and or your roof damage and and right. uh, things like that so you know I, I think all of those things have been um, you know it's it's been a succession of events and yeah. and uh, um, I've been really um, I've been lucky to be where I've been at mm -hmm. uh, at the time and to be able to to do some of some of those good things. I think sometimes in life you don't what you do today mm -hmm. um you don't really see the results for until Later. several years yeah. after. Um, but you just have to keep doing good work and you have to keep doing the things that you love and the things that are going to make a difference to somebody. And I want to I want to do that. Are you ready to dive into the vibrant world of business in Topeka? Well, look no further than TK Business Magazine. You'll be able to discover the stories of innovative leaders, passionate entrepreneurs, and learn the real journey behind their success. TK Business Magazine is where inspiration meets reality. You can grab a copy today by heading to www.tkmagazine.com. I appreciate you, first of all, listing all these um, successful accomplishments that you have accomplished because I think that people don't see enough the leader behind all the work. And I know it takes a team. I know you're doing this with a team, but I think it's important to be reminded that like families in Kansas are safe and more um, secured because of the work that you guys are doing in all aspects. And so I appreciate that. And so I want to go into um, your legacy and what that looks like. I mean, you listed off so much. I'm like, dang, this is a powerhouse moment. This this is it. This is it. Are you done or do you have more? Oh, I think everybody has more. Mm -hmm. I think, it, you know, uh, I like the Irma Bombeck uh, quote that, you know, when it, when I die, I'm going to come skidding into the into the grave. Um, mm. yeah, I, I as long as I'm um, healthy and and uh, able to do things. I mean, I think there's so much to do and, and we should all be concerned about the community we live in and the state we live in. And and uh, I, I really look forward to continuing whatever that looks like for me yeah. uh, in the future. I love that. Okay, as we are coming to a close um, on our show today, I want to know something super fun and super powerful, and I want to know what is your superpower? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my superpower. You know, I think my superpower is just asking questions. Mm. And uh, I think that uh, uh, my staff and uh, I know my husband would tell you that uh, I ask a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. I think that when you ask a question, it leads into, uh, um, and sometimes it leads into more questions, right. um, but it leads into conversations also. Um, I, uh, uh, a couple of things about that. When I, I was a young pharmacist and uh, um, I probably was still in school at the time. And, you know, and, and I remember being, uh, told stories of people that 
uh, when a customer comes in and when a patient comes in for their medication and you know they're kind of grumpy and you, you don't know what's happened to them right yeah. they might have gotten a bad diagnosis they uh, they haven't heard from their kids for a while um, they had a fight with their spouse or, or a sibling or whatever I mean you never know what's going on mm -hmm. but you know my my goal was to um, impart my knowledge to them yeah. about drug drug interactions and how to take it and mm -hmm. make sure that they were they were taking it right because I'm kind of the last stop before yeah. they go home and um, you know what I found was like just asking a simple question like how how are you doing today you know how's your day going mm -hmm. you know and you could find out all kinds of things and and yeah. some sometimes um, sometimes help people with that so that's kind of a, a, a smaller way that I mean yes. I guess I think that's what started me in a asking questions um, I have a grandson who mm -hmm. um, I, have, I have four grandchildren that I love yes. but um, I have a grandson that is very inquisitive and he asks a lot of questions and uh, our son, his dad said, um, you know, drive him to school and I just can't take all the questions in the morning. I want to enjoy the drive. It's a beautiful drive. I want to enjoy the drive. Yeah. So he said, okay, you can have two questions <laughs> per ride. And uh, and I think, oh, that is my child. And and uh, one day he said, uh, so do I still only get two questions? He goes, you're down to one. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> so maybe I pass that on yeah. to at least one of my grandchildren. But um, mm -hmm. I, I do think being inquisitive of, about things is, is, is important. Yes. And, you know, it's how, I guess for me, it's, it's mm -hmm. how I I learn so I don't know whether it's a superpower it might be an annoying power oh gosh, to some yes. but um, I've heard that before as well like people are like why are you so nosy I'm like I'm not nosy I'm curious right I want to learn curious yeah. and I think that's the best way like you said to like be personal get to know someone is you ask them so many different questions and I always like warn people especially like whether it's an interview or I'm meeting someone for the first time I'm like hey disclaimer I ask a tons of questions it's just because I'm naturally curious I'm not trying to get into your business or anything like that but um i love that trait because i have that same trait that superpower too asking a lot of questions but vicky if you could conclude on this um if you can speak to any young ladies out there that are interested in getting into public office or being a public servant like you what advice would you give them well i think there's a whole bunch of advice to give them but uh i i, I would start with um you need to, everyone does community service in some way. I think mm -hmm. the majority of people do do community service in some way. Uh, it's just, but running for public office is really putting yourself out there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think that um, historically, most women run for public office because somebody asks them. Mm -hmm. If they don't run unless somebody asks them. I don't know why we think we need to be asked, but, yeah. but apparently we do. And I would say, listen to the people around you mm -hmm. because I, I think that sometimes people around you see traits in you that yeah. you don't see in yourself. Right. And when they tell you that you might be, you might have a knack at this or you'd be good at that, um, mm -hmm. listen to them because I think sometimes they see things that we don't see in ourselves and, and you can you can um, take that and, and run with it. You know, I, I just, um, Girl State, uh, was some of our Girl State, uh, sponsored by the American uh, Auxiliary Legion, was, was just in, in uh, Lawrence and I got to speak to those women. And I, I want to tell you that after that and a few other um, interactions that I've had with young people in in our state yeah I'm so excited for what the future brings for our state yes well Vicki thank you so much for your time that concludes our episode for at the core series it's been a pleasure I really enjoyed our time today our girl talk today was fantastic <laughs> me too you are just a jewel so keep doing what you do <laughs> thank you <laughs> thank, thank you. you guys for tuning into at the core series right here with Danielle J Martin we're going to continue our conversation with local leaders here across Kansas if you have someone that you're interested in let us know shoot us a message and we will get them here on the show. In the meantime, have a great day.